For me, kayak fishing is simple. A boat, a paddle, a fishing rod, and unspoiled water. The fish are big. Chaos is beautiful. It's angling's addictive final frontier, and I'm hooked. I'm Drew Gregory, and this is Hooked on Wild Waters. So Christina and I were sitting around the house one day, and we've been working hard, traveling the country, you know, running this tournament trail called River Bassin, and we're exhausted. We said, we need a break. And so we think about it, we say, you know what? Why don't we go down to Florida? What girl doesn't love Florida, right? So I think, all right, this is perfect. Because I'm also thinking about how much water there is to fish in Florida. So she's thinking about the beach, probably. I'm thinking about the water we can kayak and paddle. And there's such a variety of water in Florida. You know, you've got the, the saltwater flats, you've got the inshore uh, saltwater, you've got uh, the freshwater rivers, you got the blackwater freshwater rivers, there's just such a variety. You got the Everglades, you can go anywhere and do anything. So, you know, we're pulling out of the driveway, and she's kind of wondering why I have so many kayaks on the back of my trailer. But obviously, you guys know why. So, on the way down to Florida, Christina and I get to talking about, you know, all the things we can do. And I mentioned to her there's some really cool blackwater rivers that have a really cool, unique bass, the, the Swanee bass that I love to catch. It just turns out that my good friend, Dr. Michael Allen, who is a fisheries biologist at the University of Florida, was available and right on our path to get down to Tampa. So I called him up and he said, yeah, I'd love to talk to you and share with you a little bit about the cool Swanee bass. And maybe, just maybe, we could get on the water for a couple hours and hopefully just catch one. I just want to catch one of these fish to show you guys what they're all about because they're definitely rare and very unique, cool fish to catch. So I'm here with Dr. Michael Allen, a fisheries science professor at the University of Florida. We're gonna stop in and try to fish for Swanee bass. They're a rare black bass species that only lives in this region in Florida. And, and tell me a little bit about those fish. I've caught them before, but they're definitely way different than any other black bass I've caught. They're a neat little black bass. You know, the world record size is just under four pounds. They're a beautiful fish that's found in the rivers around the Suwannee and the, and the upper part of the Gulf. An interesting fish, they pretty much only eat crayfish. So we've looked at hundreds of diets and you hardly ever find fish in their stomachs. So Dr. Allen, Tell me a little bit about the snook. I mean, they almost, when I look at them and I, and I was fishing for them, it almost looks like they want to just go up more than the redfish. Looks like it wants to go down all the time. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a, what we call a, a terminal mouth. So their mouth is, is for up, upward feeding. They tend to c come from below on their prey and they do do a lot of surface feeding. So that's why topwater lures are really effective oh, yeah. for them. Now I've caught more redfish in the past but they're interesting fish as well. I mean, explain a little bit about the redfish and where its habitat is and how diverse it is. Redfish are really a neat predator and they're, they're an interesting fish. They're found on oyster bars, marsh grasses, and uh, it's interesting, the whole fishery is on the juveniles because the adults spawn offshore. Well, Dr. Allen, thank you so much for your time today, all the information on the fish species. I'm gonna go grab Christina and we're gonna go get on that beautiful Santa Fe River and catch some of those Swanee bass. Hey, next time, we need to get on the water together and go fishing. That sounds good. Well, Dr. Allen had told me that Swanee bass mostly eat crayfish. And I knew they ate a lot of crayfish. I had no idea it was such a large, large percentage. So rather than put the paddle tail on the back of my chatterbait today, I'm gonna actually use the turbo crawls from Z-Man. They're a great crawfish imitator. You can see these claws, they flap really, really violently as you're dragging it across. Plus the chatterbait's vibration, I think surely will get bit by a Swanee bass on this guy. These rough wear life jackets for dogs are amazing. It's called a float coat. I love fishing with my dog Lou, but sometimes I gotta admit, it can be a pain in the butt, especially with how much energy she's got. You know what I mean? Oh, come on. Plus, she's always interested in what I'm doing. She's a smart dog. She sees that I'm trying to catch these fish. She's always come barking on. at the lure. Okay, thanks Lou. Mess up the spot. Thank you. Come here. Get back in. It can be very challenging. Exactly that, challenging but rewarding at the same time. So when I catch fish with Lou on the boat, it's always a fun time. All right, so far the bite has been a little slow. The water's up for this river, so it's darker. You got more of that tannic water coming in. 
And of course, you just never know what's going on with fish. Now, the cool thing about Florida rivers is there's so much vegetation, and there's a technique that I don't get to use all the time further north called flipping and pitching. And basically, you flip with a very heavy rod. You flip in a very heavy bait, about an ounce and a half, ounce, could, different weights just thick enough and heavy enough just to punch through that vegetation because underneath that mat of vegetation you've got a ton of fish it's a whole nother world a whole nother ecosystem i feel like i'm through it there he is oh, what comes out but a brim a nice size brim you know it's about as big as my hand but it wasn't the bass i'm looking for but it's a good sign so brim love to hang around those plants no no differently than why the bass do actually but a lot of other life is attracted to a lot of other life that lives outside of the water amphibians lots of flowers that uh, insects are in there pollinating little small bugs and of course they can just sit there and you'll hear it just kind of just pecking and eating all day long underneath mats like that wherever you find brim and panfish like that you're gonna find bass because they of course love to eat those kind of fish you know, the amazing thing about fishing in wild waters is all the wildlife and the nature that you see. And I, I'm guilty, I'm the worst of this, to be honest with you. I just focus on catching fish nonstop. I just go hard, I just cast, 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 and just wanna catch fish. But fortunately for me, my wife is different and she has that gift. And she noticed so many things out there, owls and snakes and turtles and so many cool things. And I actually got a chance to stop myself and just look up and look around and just how beautiful this place really is. I see the tops of these amazing cypress trees that are hundreds and hundreds of years old. And then I look, of course, back down at the cypress knees that are in the water. They're sticking up and it's just perfect cover for bass. And that's where you'll find a lot of your fish right on the bank hiding there. Oh yeah, fish on. Oh yeah. Ooh, they like the shallow section right now. Stay down, stay down. Oh, large mouth. Swing over here. Hey, Lou, off, off, off. I know you're excited. I know, I know, I know. Settle down. I'm excited too. It's not the Swanee bass I was hoping for, but I think we're starting to get onto a pattern. All right, this is not the giant largemouth we're looking for. They obviously get a lot bigger than this. The biggest of the black bass species, but this was on the shallow side of the river, and we're gonna keep that in mind, and that may be because this is spawning season. They could be shallow, they could be up spawning. We'll keep it in mind, maybe we'll get a big one down the, down the river, downstream. So, let's let her go. Still a lot of fun, we fight so hard in this current. So we found our way into one of the many springs that enter this Blackwater River here. And of course, this water is crystal clear blue. It's an amazing, amazing phenomenon here in Florida. We got limestone rock, as the base, and limestone is very porous, so a lot of these rivers, the aquifer, that just goes underground only, and they flow underground, then at some point they just come boiling up right here in the springs just like this. And of course, this one goes out to this river and eventually the Gulf of Mexico. You know, I really want to catch a swanee bass. I see this spot that is perfect, right on this nice river bend. So I make a cast, and I'm reeling it in, and, and I get bit. Oh, God, I just got nailed. And I miss it. But I know that it didn't really feel the hook, so let me quickly make another cast in there. But it's probably too late to even make this cast at this point. However, there's a fish there. I want to catch it, and I hook up with this fish. There we go, there we go. Fish on. Oh, man, the swanee bass. Wait, Lou, leave it. Leave it, leave it. Easy, easy. Power pull down. Power pull. Oh god, wasps. Waspness. Oh, oh, I get stung by several wasps, and I'm just not one of those people that cuss a lot. I know now what my vocabulary is capable of. But if you remember, it kind of reminded me of that goose attack video. Stupid duck. Geez, These things are gonna get hooked before it's all said and done. They keep acting dumb like this. Ow. 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 <laughs> I just got attacked by the dang geese. Ugh. What did I do to you? Well, after the dust finally settles, 
I'm still stuck in the bushes, and I realize I at least have my one Swanee bass. I mean, these aren't the biggest bass. They don't get very big, you know. I, I think the record's three or four pounds, but I've got one here, you guys can finally see it, and that's what I came for. I don't know if it was worth all the pain, but hey, at least we got the fish. Hey, buddy. You were not worth all that trouble, not at all. I'm so glad you guys got to see a Swanee bass. It's a shame the bite wasn't as good as it was, but the beauty about fishing wild waters, as you can see today with the springs, the birds, there's so much activity and life going on, you don't have to catch a big fish to enjoy fishing on wild waters. And that's another reason I'm hooked on wild waters. Time to get down to Tampa and get some more R&R &R and maybe even get some more fishing in. You know, people always ask me, Drew, do you do anything besides fishing? All you do is fish, fish, fish. But actually I do. If there's one thing that I do that's sort of a break from, you know, work for me, right? It's actually play golf. So we, we drive by this mini golf course, it's called Congo River Mini Golf, and Christina loves to play too, so we're very competitive. So we gotta stop in, we gotta check out this mini golf, I at least get a little bit of my you know, golf fix in. And they actually had baby alligators there that we could hold too, so it was really cool to be able to see these creatures up close in person that we see so often out on the water. Christina can tell that I'm just itching to get on the water and catch a fish, especially since snook live in this area and I don't get a chance to get down here to catch snook very often. So she gives me the pass, I go out in this morning just by myself, just trying to catch some fish. And let me tell you what, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. If you've never been to Tampa and the mangroves there and the inshore fishing, you definitely need to give it a shot. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by Jackson Kayak, we make fun. GoPro, be a hero. Bending branches, pretty, smart paddles. Orion Coolers, never lose your cool. 13 Fishing, make your own luck. Z-Man Lures, the science and art of fishing. <laughs>